Hey everybody, my name is Paul Eston Jr., a.k.a. Boy Green. I'm the New York Jets digital reporter for Heavy.com, and it's game week, week three, the New York Jets and the Cincinnati Bengals at MetLife Stadium. This is a game that had a little bit of magic last year at MetLife Stadium, but a couple of different cast of crew and characters, and to break it all down, we'll bring on the same man we chatted with last year. That is Wayne Box Miller. He is the Radio Network pre, halftime, and postgame host for the Cincinnati Bengals. Let's bring him in. Wayne, how are we, baby? What's up, Paul? How you doing, man? Long time to talk to. Uh, I know, man. And uh, I, I wish the Jets and Bengals would play every week just so I could talk to you, man. I, uh, I love <laughs> chat with you. It's a lot of fun. And our fans really enjoyed our last conversation. So, of course, we had to schedule it on the dock of this year. But, Wayne, I guess my first question is, what the hell is going on there in Cincinnati? This team was just in the Super Bowl 0-2. Are there pitchforks and torches running around Cincy right now? No, you know, there are a few people, the bandwagon people or uh, seatbelts are on, but, you know, the casual <laughs> casual fan is already ready to jump off. And, you know, Joe Burrow said in the press conference today, everybody take a deep breath and, you know, we'll be fine. I think, you know, you got a new offensive line. Uh, those guys are trying to learn each other. And so uh, from last week to this week, the biggest differentiator is at home you don't have any noise on a snap count, but this week in Dallas, they had obviously a hundred thousand people. I'd say 99,000 were against them. So uh, those guys trying to understand silent counts. And again, anybody that goes to a new job, there's a filling out process and and that's what happened, but they'll be fine. I mean, it's too much talent, Uh, too many professionals. Uh, The news guys, they signed Kappa and Karras and those guys on the front line. Uh, They'll be fine. Yeah, because let's talk about that, because to be honest, from the outside looking in towards Cincinnati, you know, yeah. the Bengals were this close, quite frankly, just winning the Super Bowl outright with the team that they had. But people would say the one weakness is the offensive line. And if they fix that, whew, 17 and oh, the Bengals are, are <laughs> marching on through. And it looked like the Bengals did that this offseason. All the Lyle Collins falling from the sky from there uh, in Dallas was a, a nice surprise. And all the other additions they made to the trenches. So on paper. I'm going to be honest, I was jumping on like Bengals, AFC North champs, <laughs> Super Bowl, we're going back. Like, this is phenomenal. But for some reason, it hasn't amounted. I think the stat I saw was uh, Joe Burrow's on pace to get sacked 111 times. Like, is it Joe Burrow holding on to the ball too long? Is it the offensive line gelling? You mentioned a lot of new pieces. Or, yeah. as always, is it somewhere in between? Well, you know, I think when, when uh, Pro Football Focus released a report and they – Uh, spread those sacks around. If you were attributed to Joe, I think Joe would be honest to say uh, probably could have got rid of the ball a couple of times, but you're used to letting plays develop. He's, you know, great quarterbacks. Their blessing is also their curse. The blessing is they're willing to stay in there and take that hit to make that great throw down the field. The curse is you hold that ball too long to make that play down the field, and then you end up getting sacked. So you have to live with those results. I think I'll take Joe Burrow every time behind center. Again, I think when you got guys that haven't played together, uh, every play, every down, every series, every quarter, every half, every game, uh, they're learning more and more. And so these two games they had, one on the road, one at home, they really learned a lot about each other. Going to New York, uh, this team knows what happened last year. Uh, I think that this game is, I don't want to call it revenge. I'm not going to hype it, but it's a redemptive game. I mean, I think you want to go back to New York and say, we didn't play as well as we could in uh, the Meadowlands last year, or MetLife Stadium, excuse me. So we're going to come back and try to play. And, yes, we do need a win. Uh, You don't want to start 0-3. But I think this team, because of the number of guys that they have, who've won. And that's a big deal now. You've won. You know what winning takes. But I think the biggest differentiator is you now have a target on your back versus going out looking for someone with a target on their back and doing a hunting. So I think they're ready for that. They expect it to be hunted. They expect the people to give them their best shot. But I think at the end of the day, it's a minor adjustment. Really think about it. The defense uh, in the uh, second half has only given up six points in two games. I mean, you think about um, the overtime, they gave up the points, but, you know, the first quarter is where they've stumbled, right? So they come out of the gate, they give up 14 against Dallas, then they pretty much shut Dallas down. So they've got to tighten up in the first quarter, and the offense has to get going in the first quarter. So on both sides of the ball, I think neither one would be happy in how they start the game. Uh, But I think once the game gets going, you see the fire firepower you see the composure nobody's panicking there's no arguing on the sidelines but those are minor adjustments think about this 
as bad as you played and you lose two games by a total of six points. If I told you Joe Burrow threw four picks and had a turnover for five, and I didn't tell you what the score was. They lost by 100. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So the resiliency, uh, the determination of this team, and, uh, you know, I'm like Joe Burrow, just, you know, take a chill pill, drink a bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> General speaker Wayne Box Miller here on the program. Again, make sure everybody, if you like what you see, like the video, hit subscribe down below, and of course, follow Wayne Box Miller on old Twitter. I love the inspirational quotes, and he's always a great follow, of Thank course, you. on the social media as well. It always g- gives me a pep in my day when I see when I see all of that, Wayne. So uh, keep Thank up you, the brother. great work from that yes, perspective, sir. of course. And, and let me ask you that very nugget you just said on the outside. National shows slam the panic button. Bengals 0 and two, but I see the same thing you did okay so they had five turnovers and lost in overtime to a division rival and then week two against cooper rush it took a last second field goal to uh, avoid another potential overtime right. game there where they right. ended up winning the game so i gotta imagine there is a quiet confidence maybe louder than that in the Bengals soccer i'm like okay we're on two but again we're right here we're as robert Sala said at the press conference today we're right. just a lucky ball bounce away from two and oh so you can you can, you know, evaluate it however you want to, but it looks like the Bengals obviously are, are the same talented team they were in the Super Bowl, maybe even more talented, a- except with a few unlucky bounces. Well, yeah, yeah it's a funny you said. They think about the Tennessee Titan game last year in the playoffs, a deflection we intercept. This time it's a deflection and they catch the ball. Mm-hmm. So uh, you look at this, sometimes the ball bounces away, sometimes it doesn't. The defense, everybody's back from last year. Um, so they're good. They're going to be fine. They'll they'll get going uh, quicker. Uh, the offense will be fine. They've got guys that have won at other places. They they didn't sign guys who were zero and seventeen and guys who were four and thirteen. They signed guys from winning teams like Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. So you know they know what it takes to win. I think um, with seventeen games, yeah, you don't want to start zero and two. Let me let me be clear. However, yeah. you have fifteen games to go. Um, you're only a, a game out of the division lead, so you're not two games out after two losses. So you're you're right where you would like to be if you're struggling. Mm. You're not where you like to be, but you li- you're right where you need to be if you're struggling. That's just one game out. Thank you guys very much for handling Cleveland. We appreciate that. You're welcome. Very, very yes. kind and kindred of you. Mm. Yes, and, and uh, let me say, uh, I will return the you're welcome to you guys. While <laughs> you may not have appreciated the loss at the time last year, but a bit of a wake-up call as Cincinnati goes on this amazing run uh, all the way to the Super Bowl. And uh, you brought it up, so thankfully I didn't have to. So again, last year, the Bengals, I'm sure, walking into the Jets go, this is the Jets, Mike White. Who who yes. the hell is this guy? And of course, the Jets get the surprise. They needed a lot of things. So even despite all the magic that happened, they went sure. 34-31. So again, that's another factor in all of this but tell me this first off how are the Bengals looking at this game now I imagine with a much different eye than last year and also how did they respond to that we obviously saw what they did to the Super Bowl but in terms of wow how the heck did we lose to this Jets team that I think a lot of people overlook well you know first and foremost I think that if you're a team in the NFL you're capable of beating every 31 other teams I mean let's let's put that on the table Mm. there is no automatic win this is not the SEC where (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, you know, Alabama is playing, you know, one of the lesser than or in the right. Big Ten where someone's playing Nebraska when Scott Frost is a head coach. Whoa. I mean, there there are games that in the NFL, the other team matches up better. And I think you and I talked about this. The defensive line of the Jets last year mm-hmm. was your strength. Our weakness, obviously, last year was our offensive line. So the matchup for us wasn't good. Now, that being said, I think that we shot ourselves in the foot a few times. And when you do that against a team that's struggling, all of a sudden it goes from, I wonder if we can. Hey, maybe we can. Hey, I think I can. Hey, let's, let's. And then they ended up beating us because they just hung around. And you know, Mm -hmm. a sportsman, if you let a team hang around, (laughs) uh, sometimes good things aren't going to happen. And uh, and that's all it was. And I think this game, uh, before the 0-2 start, I think this would have been a game that would simply be redemptive. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going back to New York. We're not going to play like we did last year. Well, now it's we're not going to go 0-3. So mm-hmm. there's a little bit more incentive, and it's not even about the Jets' redemptive game anymore. It's we need a win yeah. because we don't want to start the season 0-3. So I think the mindset changes. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I think you'll see a lot of embracing and, and camaraderie with CJ Uzama and a lot of the players. I mean, there those are authentic relationships. I don't think you'll see anything other than that. Um, I think that those guys all just really appreciate each other. They were that was a special group of people last year. And you know, this is a business, Paul. You know that, man. Is you know, guys win the Super Bowl at the Rams, you know, five or six of them are gone. Von Miller left. I mean, yeah, he's in Buffalo, but it's NFL is a business. But the camaraderie, the friendships, you know, going to battle with people day in and day out, that never changes. So um, I think, you know, guys will be before the game embracing, I think after the game embracing. But as a team, as a unit, the Bengals are coming to New York to get off the snide. They're coming to get win number one, make the adjustments they need to make, um, tweak, you know, whatever you need to do, and then just go from there. Let's talk about some of those players you brought up. CJ uh, Uzama, of course, and, and by the way, he is questionable for this game, unfortunately, because of uh, he had some, I believe, it was hamstring tightness uh, last week. So game okay. time decision. So we'll see on the quote unquote revenge game factor for him. But the other guy, Carl Lawson, of course, yes. uh, the uh, former Cincinnati Bengals draft pick out of Auburn, and uh, he's slowly working his way back again. The Achilles injury last year was absolutely devastating, oh, and yeah. and uh, again, really sad. But let me ask you, you know, those relationships. Those guys were there, uh, CJ, obviously, for a, a very long time, but uh, sure. Carl as well. A lot of long years spent there with uh, those guys, with you guys. Well, you know, the, you, you're always fond of the team that drafts you. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, man, you, you're, you're appreciative of a team saying, we believe that you have what it takes to play in this league, and, and we feel like you're going to help us. And Carl did. He got off to a great start. I uh, just felt so bad for him with the Achilles and the injuries he sustained as an NFL player. It's unfortunate because he has a load of talent, but Joseph Osai literally came in and replicated Carl Lawson coming off the edge and he gets hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Trey Hendrickson, man, hard to argue anybody feeling like we missed out by signing Trey Hendrickson. I, I got to tell you, man, I mm. didn't know as much about him as I do now. But I tell you what, I remember Cam, I think it was Cam Jordan that said, you guys are getting a, a winner. And, and I tell you what, nobody wants to win every down more than Trey Henderson. And I do mean every down, not 80% of the downs or 67% or 89. He wants to win every down, man. And I I just love watching the young man play. Uh, so I think that that's, that's it. I don't think there's any – kind of you know motive of i'm gonna show them that they messed up by getting rid of me or i'm gonna show them by not signing me again it's a business they made business decisions uh carl made a business decision at the end of the day you got a shelf life in this league if you're lucky Mm. of five years you better make the money and be wise with it and uh keep your body in good shape but carl lawson is a physical specimen and you know uh, his i think his dad's a trainer but you look at him Mm-hmm. Uh, he, you could put him on a poster from Rome back in the gladiator <laughs> days and probably believe he was there. I mean, he's that, that fit. Yeah. A hundred percent. I will be honest, Wayne, and, uh, catching the L's, uh, when the Bengals made the switch of obviously allowing Carl Lawson to leave, it's a two way street, you know, two to takes two to take. Sure. They brought in Trey Hendricks and I went, Hmm. Okay, let's see how this goes. And obviously, right. Hendrickson and the Super Bowl run and everything went, whoa, mama. Okay, I guess the Bengals uh, knew a little something here that's uh, <laughs> uh, very impressive on, uh, you know, uh, bringing Trey in. So he's been everything that everything and more that Bengals fans could have hoped for in terms of uh, that little swap or any there. Yeah, and, and, you know, the other thing is you got to think about the entire defensive line in the rotation. Lost Larry Ogunjobi, yeah. who's now with the Steelers, but you got B.J. Hill who came from Buffalo, stepped in admirably and earned a nice new contract. Uh, Sam Hubbard is playing even better. I think I really think Trey Henderson has pushed him to another level. Uh, you've got Josh Tupo. You've got Cam Sample, who really played well as uh rookie season who is now coming into his own and you're adding more pieces uh, on that front line. So I think at the end of the day, they've got a rotation that they like that they can live with. Uh, and I think they'll be fine in that respect. The linebackers are the same Pratt and Logan Wilson. I think Logan Wilson will be a pro bowler in this league. He is a special player. He's earned the respect of coaches and even uh, coaches on other teams. The kid just seems to be right where he's supposed to be. Uh, when a scheme is designed, like if the scheme is designed for him to be here, not here, 
he will be there. Uh, Chidobe Awuzie, man. I mean, just mm. a great first year with the Bengals. He's back. Eli Apple. And then I think we have the best tandem of safeties in Bates and Bell. And, you know, obviously Jesse came in late, but he was in great shape. He already knows the system. It's yeah. just about getting in football shape. But uh, the defense is rock solid. Our kicker, Evan McPherson, I mean, 55, 60 yards, you know, okay, move out of the way. I got that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so they, they, they've got a lot of great pieces. And, you know, the wide receiver cores, rocks off Higgins and mm. Chase, uh, even Hayden Hurst. Now, you know, he replaced C.J. Uzama. He's shown his worth already. I mean, in two games, he's had a couple of crucial third down catches and third down plays where he had to fight for the yardage. And, I mean, you look at the, the Pittsburgh game, he literally drug a guy like, I will get the first down. Yeah. Um, uh, so he's really provided that replacement punch that you hoped he would. And some think he's a better route runner. And, you know, he's shown a lot of skill, excellent blocker. Yeah. Um, so, again, the pieces are there. When you got all of these things, sometimes you just got to let them work together. It's like my dad used to say, every time he bought a new car, he'd drive it like a cross country. I'm like, what are you doing that for? He said, iron out anything that's wrong with the mm. engine. I just I love put it that. on the road. And I, so right now I guess we're halfway to Omaha. So <laughs> you know, we're trying to get, get all the kinks knocked out. We'll be fine. All right. Let's get a couple of quickies uh, before we get you out of here, Wayne. Jamar Chase. Interesting. I was looking back at the, uh, the game last year. I'm like, Oh, what, what, uh, what interesting nuggets kind of stand out. And I went, wow, I forgot we held old Jamar Chase to three catches for 32 yards in the touchdown. I imagine that's one that Jamar Chase has kind of circled on the calendar. A couple of upgrades, of course, Jets bring a DJ Reed and Fridzi and sauce Gardner, uh, who's the popular rookie. So I imagine this is one Jamar's like, okay, let me, uh, let me correct that one from last year. Jamar just wants to win. Yeah, I, I, I tell you what, I've been around pro sports. Um, you know, I turned 67 last week, and I tell you, I've been around sports a long time. I have never seen three more unselfish wide receivers in a wow. group in my life, period. Mm. I mean, these guys literally do not uh, worry about individual statistics, man. They will root for each other. Uh, Zach Taylor talked about it last week about Tyler Boyd, man. He just doesn't get many touches. He said he's yet to once come to him and say, I need more touches or why aren't I getting that's them? cool. They, they literally, when I tell you they like each other and there's Mike Thomas, the other wide receiver in that group and, and Stanley Morgan and, and on and on, man. I mean, these guys, it's, it's really beautiful to see a brotherhood and a bond of guys that say, we really like each other and, and we want the best for each other. So I don't think Chase is coming in looking to say, I'm going to uh, avenge uh, a poor performance. He's coming in basically to say, whatever I can do to help us win, I I'm going to do that. All right, Wayne, before we get you out of here, we have to uh, get you to pull out the old crystal ball here. Week one, the Jets <laughs> get smacked by those Baltimore Ravens. Those guys are pretty good. And then they come back, and the Maracos come back against Cleveland to win. So they head into this one with a, a blowout and a come-from-behind victory. Not really sure what to see here. And obviously the Bengals are are trying to do whatever they can to avoid uh, you know, that 0-3 sure. start to the season. So uh, give it to me, Wayne. How do you see this game playing out? Is this a high-scoring game, low-scoring game, and – Ultimately, uh, come on, who comes out with it? Well, my crystal ball's in the shop. It was supposed to be back today, so I, I don't know what happened. <laughs> you know, it's mechanics, man. Every yeah, time you know. your car is going to be ready on yeah. Tuesday or Wednesday, you never get it back. But, no, I think I think the Bengals are going to be fine. I think that this game should be one that they will win, not because they're just going to walk in with this bravado and arrogance. Mm -hmm. I think there's a sense of urgency on this team. I think that there's some – things that are tweaks, not corrections. They think they're just tweaks. And I think that they'll make those corrections and they'll get out and uh, have a good performance. You know, I'm not a numbers guy. Uh, mm -hmm. I just think that for this team, they're looking to get back into a rhythm of winning. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they put, you know, 21 plus points on the board. Uh, I think this defense is rock solid. I think they're determined to continue to play well. I, I see the Bengals winning, obviously, and not because of anything other than it's a sense of urgency and they're not that far off from what people think. I mean, many people are saying, oh, man, what's wrong with the Bengals? And I say, remember, two losses, one in overtime, a total of six points, second half of both games, they shut the offenses down. 
second half of both games, the offenses, Joe Burrow and company drove down the field and got must-have scores, a two-point conversion last week, a must-have two-point conversion. So both teams in the second half, offense and defense for the Bengals, when they needed to make a play and step up and make it happen, they did. I think this week they start that play, that style of play earlier, and put themselves in a great position to win this game. Yeah, there you go. Uh, old Joey B, that's a good uh, QB to trust in if uh, if you need one. Uh, Wayne, I gotta be. I said it at the beginning of the interview. I wish the Jets and Bengals played every week because you're my favorite guest that comes here on the show. I love you, buddy. Uh, thank you so much uh, for taking the time. I know our fans enjoy it as well. Good luck, of course, on Sunday. Yeah. Enjoy the call and, uh, you know, uh, enjoy the uh, Jets-Bengals on Sunday. Hey, man, you make it easy. I truly, I truly enjoy talking with you, man. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, sometime in the off season, we'll just have to do this just because we have to do it. Exactly right. I, we don't even need a reason to chat. Wait, I'm not quite sure why we wait till Jets Bengals week. We should be doing this uh, all the time. I appreciate, it. and uh, we'll make sure we make that happen. Wayne, thanks, brother. Okay, brother, take care. There he is, uh, Wayne Box Miller, the Cincinnati Bengals uh, radio network pre halftime and post game host here on the channel. 